This is the 2023 Honda Accord Sport. Is it the sportiest looking trim level of the all new fully redesigned Honda Accord? Well, you'll have to tell me what you think down in the comments as we work our way through the tour on this model that I borrowed from my friends here at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana. It has an exterior color of platinum white. It has a black interior. Let's talk a little bit about more what of what you can find here if this is something you want to buy this is a demo model from homes honda so it's not available for sale right now but obviously they will have some available if you're interested i'll still leave a link down in the description of the video if you want to know more than what we cover in the video today so we don't make it an hour long and obviously you're going to see some accessories here that we haven't seen on any of the other accords we've looked at we've looked at ex's we did look at a touring when I was at the Chicago Auto Show, I'm looking forward to actually driving this one with the hybrid powertrain. So we'll see how that goes. You will find quite a few additions that Honda has made. And so here's what we have. This is what the sticker price would be originally, $33,445. Here is the actual price of the vehicle because they've added auto butler, They've added window tint, and auto butler is basically paint protection. They've also added the wheel locks. They've added all of the spoilers around the whole vehicle. The spoiler here on the front end. We also have the lower spoilers here on the side. We'll also have the same thing on the rear. And we'll just take a quick look around at exactly how that looks. You can see everything working its way up on the body, and it gives it a nice finish here on the rear of the vehicle. Speaking of the rear of the vehicle, here's something else that you'll get with this trim level. You're going to have the nice spoiler right here. It's gonna really finish things off. That looks nice. And even though it's not part of the additions that Honda made, you do have the body color antenna, or excuse me, the gloss black shark fin antenna up there. And one of the biggest differences here that you'll notice right off the bat with these all new fully redesigned taillights gone is the stapler look so you won't think of a stapler when you take a look back here anymore then we're going to have our heated power adjustable side view mirrors going to have blind spot monitoring built in they are a combination of gloss black and you'll have the matte black here on this area but the full mirror itself is gloss black body color for the door handles and what about tire and wheel size 235 on the width, a 40 series sidewall, and a combination of brushed aluminum and gloss black on that 19 inch wheel. So let's take a look at the remote because I know y'all are going to want to know what that looks like. There you go. It does have remote start, everything you would expect to see there. A nice compact and light, but I believe well-made and durable remote. The headlight design obviously changing as well. We're going to have the LED headlights, the LED daytime running lights that work in conjunction with the blinker housing right there. So for those of you who want to show off your blinkers, well, that's what you do right there. You turn it on on the, on the steering column. There's a lever on the left-hand side that lets that happen. If you like gloss black, you're going to have the gloss black upper grille right here the Honda logo in there, everything fully redesigned. And then the lower grille down here is not gloss, but you will find a gloss, kind of a gray color. I don't know the name of that color right there with the front spoiler, quite a bit going on there. Now, one thing that is interesting here, like I said, this is a hybrid model, hybrid powertrain. You can tell right here. What's the advantage? Well, a lot of the time with a hybrid powertrain, you lose cargo capacity. No matter what model of the Honda Accord you buy for 2023, what trim level, whether it's the hybrid version or not, the cargo capacity remains the same even from the 10th generation at 16.7 cubic feet. And because I'm often asked this question, let me answer it. What are the percentages of window tint? We're looking at 40% on the front windows, 25 on the rear windows on these doors, and on the back window, it's 12%. And if you don't know what those numbers mean, that is the percentage of light that is allowed into the interior with that window tint on the windows. And here under the hood, we're gonna have a combination of the two liter direct injection four cylinder and the two motor hybrid electric system that puts a combined horsepower of 204 horsepower, 247 pounds feet of torque 
it is mated to a continuously variable transmission. And before the correction Nazis go crazy in the comments and say that isn't true, well, here we go right here. Continuously variable transmission, CVT. Yes, that does happen, folks. So I have to show that. And how about those all important MPGs? 46 city, 41 highway, 44 combined, and 2.3 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. And for those who aren't familiar with these hybrid powertrains, you might say, well, why is the MPG for the city higher than what it is on the highway? Because when you're on the highway, you're going to be mainly using the gas engine more than you're going to use the hybrid powertrain. So the gas mileage is going to change a little bit on that. That's the reason for that. That's a simple way that I can under or can explain it for you to understand in case you didn't know. And taking a little bit more of a direct look into the interior, one thing I noticed is you have a little bit more of an angle right here on the armrest. It does have soft touch materials. We'll give it the armrest test. Yes, that is comfortable. So it was a little more flat instead of kind of just angled up just a tiny bit from the 10th generation to this 11th generation. You can put a good size bottle in here or snacks, at least your rear seat passengers can. On the sport trim level, well, you can see it has some nice looking sporty material for the seats. And let's hop inside. There's not a whole lot to talk about back here. No air conditioning vents and no USB connectivity. Not quite sure why that is, but that's the case here. You will have the singular pocket on the rear of the passenger seat, but nothing here on the driver's seat. But I'm gonna show you my wild hair because it is rather windy today. Hi, everybody. But at five foot 10, I do have a little bit of space, probably, oh, one and a half inches maybe above my head, if that much. But just in case you were wondering, that is what you have where that is concerned. There is a fold down armrest back here with the cup holders built in. Obviously that's very soft and very comfortable to use. Now let's see here, what do we have as far as the latch system goes? I like the system here because you don't have any plastic pieces to remove to anchor in the child safety seats. That's good because there's nothing to keep up with. You just put this little piece in place it conceals everything away when you're not using it. And then obviously you can just pull that down like I already did and showed you how to do that when you do need to use it. Pretty nice setup back here. And we'll find a similar design here on the front doors here on the passenger side. A little bit longer armrest right here. Still kind of that same angle up. Comfortable armrest. Going to have the new design here as far as the angles and just the overall design with the trim and everything goes. Larger door bin here in the front, and then we're gonna have a manually adjustable passenger seat, but a 10-way adjustable driver's seat. We will have the gloss black trim on the lower portion of the dashboard here. We're gonna have more trim here on the top. And the thing I like here, it kind of looks a little similar to what we have with the 10th or 11th generation of the Accord, but not identical. So you can see the two are separated apart to a nice degree, so it doesn't look identical. I think Honda's done a nice job with that. We are gonna have a couple of USB ports right here, and then no wireless charging, but that is obviously gonna be available on other trim levels, especially higher trim levels. And then more of that gloss black here. So if you like the gloss black trim, you're good to go with that. You can obviously change your driving mode, go into your hybrid mode right there, and then we're going to have the power parking brake and brake hold mode cup holders right here. I like the fact that it does have these little pieces right here. So it allows you to put a multitude of sizes of cups and bottles in here without things necessarily moving around too much. And then we'll take a look at the armrest and the lid for the console, a combination of two different things there. There is a good bit of space in here and you also have a 12 volt power outlet. So technically you could buy an adapter to help out those rear seat passengers with connectivity. There is a sunroof here, like I said. It is a conventional size, but it is here in case you were curious about that. And then we're also going to have the sun visor. Let's see how far back this goes. I think that's far enough to take care of business for the driver and the passenger. You have to be sitting way back to have to concern yourself with any sun coming through that area that's at the back that is exposed with the window. And the 
vanity mirrors with the lighting right there, but that's not all. There are some big changes we're gonna take a look at from the driver's perspective. And for those who might say, hey Tom, is there a conversation mirror? There is not, but I am glad that there is a sunglass holder. It seems like more and more car makers are doing away with these sunglass holders, not in this case. The child safety locks are still going to be activated here from the rear doors, so there's no button on the driver's door panel to actually activate the locks when this button or switch is in the up position, they're inactive. When it's in the down position, they are active. Just so you know what's there. That's nothing new for these Accords, but in case anybody was curious, that's the situation. And because the do not roll down the windows, Tom, because they're freshly tinted sticker is here, well, there you go. But you can pretty much see what's here. You can control the side view mirrors, unlock and lock the doors. This button right here will lock all four windows and you can control all of the windows right here. And we're gonna have the button here to open the trunk. Gonna have those brushed aluminum pedals and the lever right here. You can drop that and adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. So let's hop inside. There you go. I just wanted you to hear the greeting. Nothing new there either, but it does sound good actually. I think that sounds a little bit better than the previous generation, at least in my personal opinion just based on memory. But something that I really like here that Honda has done a great job with, the freshly redesigned, fully digital instrument cluster. That definitely looks nice. You've got the Accord sitting right here in the center of the screen. When you turn the lights on, you're going to know you see the illumination right there. So that definitely makes a difference as far as how that works. And then we're gonna continue to have the steering wheel mounted controls here where you can work your way through all sorts of information and settings depending on what you want to do right there. That's easy to do. You can obviously control everything for the radio here. Adaptive cruise control. There is your push button start and the nicest and largest infotainment screen that Honda has ever had, at least in my opinion, it's the nicest. 12.3 inches, it is the largest. You do have Apple CarPlay, so obviously I have paired my phone and we'll go back real quick and take a look at everything that we have here before we look at too much. Let me go ahead and put the transmission in reverse. You can see what we have as far as the multi-view rear view camera. Nothing new there, but it is nice and clear. I like what I see there. And you can see everything that you have here. If you want to know what's going on with the vehicle, there you go. You can see what the charge is, the capacity, and what your range is. You can drive, we can drive 187 miles if we wanted to today. I promise I'm not going to give you a 187 mile test drive today. Or am I? Hmm, I don't know. You can probably look down on the screen and see how long this video is and know what the answer to that question is. And I do like what we have here. Very nice looking, nice graphics, everything that you have here. Let's just look at what changes as we go through the different settings. Honda really stepping up the game here in this particular area. And we do have all of the safety features right here that you can turn on and off. You can determine how aggressive they are. That's a good thing. You do have Honda sensing here with lane keeping assist, road departure mitigation, adaptive cruise control, and the traffic jam assist. So let's just see what else we have here and what everything looks like. Boy, I tell you what, if nothing else, Honda did the greatest job with all of the graphics, I think. And, and there's more going on here than that. I'm not saying that's the only thing they did a good job on, but you do have quite a few nice features here every time you go into a different screen. Well, obviously that is going to change. And we'll go home real fast here. And you do, again, you have everything over here to let you know what's going on with the vehicle as far as your power flow goes. That's going to be on the screen right there. You can obviously see what time it is there, and let's see what else we have here as far as this goes. If you're directionally challenged and you're saying, which direction am I going? Well, there's a very easy way to know. And with this larger screen, now that it's not kind of inset into the dashboard at an angle as the 10th generation of the Accord was, here's the thing. It actually reduces glare, and its position is meant to be in such a place where the driver can look down at it but they're still able to see the road with their peripheral vision at the same time, or just kind of see the road. Maybe I shouldn't say peripheral vision. We'll probably get a correction on that. There might be an optometrist watching, so I better watch what I say. But you can get the idea of what that is supposed to do. And we're gonna have our dual zone climate control down here. And so 
very easy to use, very simple to figure out. You can sync those two sides together if you want to. You can use the auto function to let the vehicle select everything for you. You've got your fan speed adjustment here. And before we take a test drive, there is one more thing I want to show you, or maybe I should say let you listen to. You do have an eight speaker audio system here. I haven't adjusted anything. I don't know if somebody else did, but I'm gonna let you listen and see what it sounds like. And hopefully that's enough. We don't want to play that for too long. Now we're going to hop out on the road for our test drive. By the way, one more thing I forgot to show you, driving modes. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have normal, we're going to have sport, and we'll go down here. We also have econ. Now check this out. This isn't the only thing you have. You also have the graphics on the infotainment screen here. So I'll show you what you have with econ mode, show you what you have with normal, and show you what you have with sport. Let's go out on the road and see what it's like to drive in these driving modes. Okay, we're gonna hop out on the road for our test drive and I apologize for the angle. It's probably the best I could give you because if I had you over on this side like I normally do, well, then you wouldn't be able to see around the window sticker and the sticker here that gives you the added features. So just trying to give you the best that I can. So we have enough charge, enough capacity here to drive in EV mode. So let me just let you listen. We're just gonna slow down a little bit now that we're cruising down the road. You know, I am pretty surprised at the acceleration here. It's pretty impressive. It's not what I know a lot of you wish Honda had kept with this 11th generation of the Accord with the two liter 2.0T, the turbocharged four cylinder that made 252 horsepower that made the Accord so much fun to drive. Yes, I'm disappointed too that they got rid of that engine combination, but this actually is fairly impressive. I haven't even had it to half throttle. I was at about quarter throttle right there, just accelerating down the road to see what it was like. But so far, my driving impressions have been good. The ride quality seems to be comfortable. I haven't been on anything terribly rough yet, but one of the roads that I drove on before I turned the camera on is most certainly not the smoothest in town. And so let's see here, let's, let's try something here. Let's try and see what we have mode wise. We're gonna go, we also have individual mode. I forgot to tell you about that, but we do have sport mode. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to do here as far as letting you know what goes on. Oh, we're gonna be okay. Yeah, we've got room. Speed limit in here is a little bit higher than where we just were. So let's see what happens. Yeah, that's pretty impressive actually. I don't mean to look like I'm racing around everybody, but just trying to show you what will happen here as far as how the acceleration goes. I'm actually pretty impressive. Still haven't had it all the way to the floor yet either. So I'm actually pretty impressive with what we have or impressed with what we have. It is rather impressive. And I don't know if we're gonna get caught by the light up here, but I am going to go into econ mode and see what I can tell as far as that goes. Yeah, we're gonna catch the red light up here. So. All right, now that the light is green again, let's take on off. Let's see how it goes here. Our first chance to go from a standing stop, still not on the floor. You know, I am impressed with the acceleration here. It's not bad. It's not neck snapping performance or anything along those lines, but when you need to get around slower moving traffic or merge onto the interstate, driving a little above the speed limit, not driving under it, that's a nice little public service announcement for you, no problem. And check this out. I'm gonna move over into the right-hand lane, which is gonna be more rough than what we have in the left, rougher, let's in case we have any English teachers watching, but just listen. Now, some of you, it may sound really loud as far as the road noise goes here, but I have to say, based on the fact that I drive this road very regularly in a lot of different vehicles, there's no music playing in the car. The air conditioner is not on high. I don't have the fan speed real high. There's no one to talk to. And so it's as quiet as it can be in here. Plus, we're in EV mode, so that makes a difference as well. And so, 
we're obviously really in a pretty good position here to listen to what we have as far as everything goes. It's really pretty quiet. The road noise is fairly impressive in my personal opinion. Everybody is going to have their varying degrees of opinions on that. That's one thing about making these car review videos is that, well, everyone's opinion is going to vary depending on what you're used to or what your expectations are. But for being in the rougher of the two lanes here, I must say I'm impressed. Handling characteristics are good. This is actually a very fun car to drive. It hugs the road nicely. It's not quite like the 11th generation of the Civic, but it doesn't have the same retuned suspension and chassis that the Civic has. So overall, I think that Honda has done a good job here. The brake pedal is nice and manageable because I, I noticed that if I hop into a vehicle when I'm used to maybe less than aggressive braking and it has aggressive braking, it's, it's a challenge to get used to. Here, no problem, I adjust just like that. So that tells me that the brake pedal and the braking system is very manageable here, very easy to use. Overall, I think Honda has done quite a nice job, at least based on my first experience driving one of these hybrid powertrain models of the new Accord. All right, now it's your turn to talk. Is the 2023 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport the best looking trim level? Obviously, a lot of what you see here is not going to come standard, but it gives you an idea of what is available. That's the advantage of having a demo here from Holmes Honda. Speaking of Hones Honda, got to say a special thanks to my friends here at the dealership for letting me use this Accord to show you what it's all about for the day as we work our way through the multiple trim levels of the 2023 Honda Accord. And I have to say a special thanks to all of you for taking the time to watch and give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. Tell me what you think. Is this the best looking trim level? Tell me what your answer is and tell me why. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, Check out the video that is on the screen right now, and I will see you there.